Your man, your plan. Do I really look like a guy with a plan? Was, what was the point of having everyone outside the castle in the first fucking place if you're gonna retreat immediately, you fuck numpties? Also, as a result of the blizzard, which John was fully aware of as an ability of theirs, Daenerys cannot light the trench with her dragon. All she needs to do is get to the ground to be able to see what's happening. Fucking perch yourself on the castle if you have to, instead of being fucking useless up there. Secondly, John is actually sitting next to the godswood. Just have him fucking do it. Just signal John to go do it. He has a fucking dragon too. He's right over there. God fucking damn it. Like, he, look at this shit. He's literally right next to the trench once it's lit. Like, he could have done it from there. Fuck off. So then we get this hilarious set of shots where everyone is trying to light a fire, but every time they do, the fires die out or they get tackled by a random fucking zombie. Because of the way they shoot it and all the shaky cam, we have no idea how many there are or where they are. All they needed to do was have the trench soaked in oil or or fuck anything flammable so that they have a backup plan in case the dragons can't do it. Because fuck me, just dropping a torch into that thing ain't gonna cut it for a while in this weather. I would like to remind you that this defense was planned by people like Varys, Tyrion, Jaime, Jorah, and the fucking Hound. What fucking nonsense. Then they decide that Melisandre can do it. She is a fire witch, I guess, so why the fuck not? She just agrees and slowly as fuck walks to her goal. I am not kidding, she may as well be crawling her way to the target, despite the fact that everyone is dying the longer she takes to get there. I also like the fact that she can apparently set Arax on fire whether or not she is touching them individually, but she couldn't hold a fucking twig inside the castle and light up all of the wood at range because her powers make complete sense. But yeah, she actually manages to pull it off and magically the entire trench lights up. What exactly are the limits of her fucking powers? Jesus Christ. The important thing is this does work. The zombies are stopped dead in their tracks and it makes you wonder why the fuck they didn't have have a bonfire perimeter that their entire army could sit the fuck behind to begin with, you wankers. <sighs> then we see Bran decides to fuck off into a bunch of crows so that he can actually say hello to the Night King. Not sure what the fuck Bran is doing here, but I'm sure it'll be explained. In terms of that part of it, like why Melisandre is so passive, now that she's shown her powers, that needs to be explained a little bit more fully. But her taking her sweet time to walk the wood, then lighting the wood, is not, I think, a very strong criticism. Her powers have never really made full sense, either on the show or in the books. I know people are confident in the books, it does make sense, but the magic system to me still feels a little wonky. It's not the most terrible thing, but I mean, once she's able to produce a shadow assassin, I think we expect her to be able to use her abilities a lot more, and she's just very passive. Again, presumably this has to do with the prophecies, so maybe there's going to be an explanation by George as to why she's so active in certain periods, but much more passive in other periods. But thus far, it's a little strange about why she acts the way she does. Presumably this will be explained in the final books. But Game of Thrones is a complete story now, so we do want a little bit better explanation why Melisandre just does not work with Bran at this point in time, especially now. I mean, technically the characters are in grave danger, so yes, you think... She's going to use every option. But I think we know why. That it was all misdirection. Like the early part of the episode is like, oh, Melisandre is going to save them. Or maybe she's going to give Beric a really powerful magic sword or something like that. And the answer is no. Right? Because, of course, the real hero is going to be Arya. But we're not going to get to that point yet. Melisandre is only going to say something to her. That's going to give us, quote, the twist that Arya and not Jon or not Beric or somebody else is going to be the one to defeat the Night King. Now, as misdirection goes, that's fine if that was the point of the character. I don't have a major issue. Now, in terms of communicating the confusion with the dragons, I think he's spot on that he doesn't seem to know this, so I'm going to be easy on him. But basically what happened is Danny chickened out. Apparently, Danny and John agreed, we're going to coordinate our attacks in XYZ fashion. But Danny, seeing the Dothraki die, just panicked and decided not to go through with the plan. And that's why, you know, the defense with the dragons at the very beginning of the episode, it feels really strange. Like, why are they not much more aggressive using the fire? Why don't they just destroy a lot more of the White Walkers with the dragons? And the answer is that Danny pulls out of the plan. But that's not communicated very effectively. So in terms of them being outside, like, well, what's going on? The answer is they agreed to a plan, but Danny did not hold to the plan. That's why they're outside. But uh, yeah, that was not communicated effectively. So half his points, I think, are very strong that the weirdness of their defensive systems is pretty strange. And yeah, that was not communicated very well. But in principle, it made sense because Danny and John had a plan, but Danny got emotional. And that is a problem because Danny has seen for herself a huge loss of life. She's seen the Dothraki die in battle. So why she became very emotional 
at that moment in this episode of all times, after years of experience of losing people, that really doesn't make any sense. So we're actually in agreement here. Yeah, the, the writing was pretty stupid, but I don't think we want to concentrate on Melisandre's powers or her walking slow. She's always walked slow and her powers have always been a little erratic from the very beginning. And he thinks the first couple of seasons were pretty good. I think I've been a little bit more critical than him on the early seasons. So yeah, I think you want to be careful in terms of honing in on that criticism that the Fire Lady doesn't make sense. Fire Lady hasn't made sense for a long time since season two. So let's be a little bit fair in that regard. All right. This has been Gurm and Thrones and Eyes on the early criticism of episode three, season eight, The Long Night. We will be continuing in a short while. Thank you for listening.